you put in the chat, remember to use the raise hand feature uh, for questions. We'll call on you and we'll go from there. Got a first one from Kent Spencer. Hey, with the, with the backs that you have in the backfield, you know, AJ, Chris, and, and Cavassier, does it help when you've got to do a running back by committee or, or have a plan that they've gone through it before in a season? Yeah, it really does. Anytime you have anybody that has SEC experience, uh, it's huge. And all three of them have played, and they've all played in, th in, in critical conditions. So uh, it, it is uh, nice for me to have three guys like that back there with some experience. I, I, if I, I'm sorry, Matt, if I could just, I'm, I'm more talking about they're used to kind of how this goes. Cause sometimes if, if, you know, they've been through the rotation thing with you guys before and, and how that maybe helps mentally because they're, they know what to be prepared for. Well, it, it, they all know that if you've got a hot hand and you're going there, the, 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 that guy's going to roll, you know, and, and, and obviously if, if you're in there and you're not producing, then uh, I take you out. So, I uh, hope I answered the question with that. I mean, they, they, they do know that they're all three going to play and they all three bring something different to the table. John Hale. Eddie, I wanted to ask you about two of your young receivers in particular from Louisville. Uh, Isaiah Cummings, Mark mentioned him last night as a freshman who might play. And then Tay Tay Crooms, who you obviously have talked about as a speed threat before. Just how have those two guys done in camp and where are they at right now? Yeah, tough. You know, this is it, it's a tough camp for a freshman because of everything that we put in, as we talked about last week. Uh, we put in everything and we really tried to see what uh, was going to stick and, and what we're really good at. And, uh, you know, that made it harder for those guys. They're still coming along. Uh, still, it, it's, it's tough on both of them. Uh, but, you know, in a 10 game season, we're, we're trying to develop those guys and get them to where they're playing uh, sometime here uh, by midseason. Josh Moore. Hey, Eddie, I know uh, that Terry's kind of back to, you know, what you want him to be um, health-wise. But, but what do you want to see from him on Saturday? Is there – are you looking for anything in particular or is it just, you know, you want to just see him get out there and you kind of figure that out on the as you go? Yeah, it, you know, it's going to be interesting for Terry. And, uh, you know, he's going to be nervous. And uh, it's my job to keep uh, – uh, you know, to make sure that he feels comfortable and everything that we're calling and what we're doing. Uh, I'll get a feel for him uh, as we're going, just like I did two years ago with him. And, um, you know, I think that uh, it's just going to be important for him to get back into a stadium and get that feeling and, and the heart racing. Uh, and I think, you know, I think the guys around him will really help him. And I want to see him manage the game. I always put, it, put us in a position to win this football game. Josh, do you have a follow-up? I saw you put your hand up again. Yeah, just a just a, another thing on, on Terry real quick, Eddie, with – you know, it looked like early on last year he was doing a good job of taking care of the ball. I know that was a problem for him a little bit his first year. Uh, is that something you see that he's still kind of continued, you know, doing through camp, or, or do you feel like that's going to um, maybe be an issue? No, he really has done a good job taking care of the ball. I've been uh, really excited about that part. You know, just uh, now it's going to be when everything's going in a, in, in a game like situation, so, you know, pulling the trigger, you know, finding the, the open guy and then creating, you know, he'll create with his legs. Uh, so I'm excited to see what uh, he, he's ready to do. Hey, Eddie, I was kind of curious. Uh, typically, you'd be practicing with the, the noise and the music and stuff pumped in. Do you guys still do that under these circumstances? And, and kind of what do you expect? Uh, Gus Malzahn mentioned earlier today that there could be some noise piped in to go along with the few fans they have. How, how will that whole situation play out? Well, because we haven't been a part of it yet, I don't know. Uh, we did have uh, noise today, actually. Um, so we'll have noise today and tomorrow. Anytime we travel, we go on the road. That's our routine. And so uh, it gets guys locked in. You got to focus. And so uh, we're, we're, we're going to be prepared. John Clay. Eddie, you spent quite a bit of time at Auburn. Uh, just your feelings about going back there and what, what are your memories of your time at Auburn? Well, I spent 10 years there, and uh, they were 10 of the uh, as, as good a years as that you can have. 
uh, being in the SEC and, um, you know, raised my family there. And uh, probably that's the biggest thing. I get to go see my daughter, uh, Lucy. She's thir- uh, 15. She's 13, gosh almighty. She's 15 now. Be driving here in a month. Uh, so I- I'm excited to that. You know, friends uh, will be there. I won't be able to see them. But, uh, you know, some guys are still on uh, uh, parts of the administration and staff there that I'll get to see. And uh, it, was, it was a good, uh, it was a great 10 years. You know, you stay somewhere 10 years, and, and that's an, an absolute blessing in this league. So, uh, but I'm, I'm Big Blue Nation now all the way. So this is the best place. Larry? Yeah, yeah. Andy, can you talk a little bit about your offensive line? The expectations are – so high for them. Have you seen any changes at all in the way these guys have approached what they're getting ready to do this year? No, it's been business as usual for those guys. And, you know, big men lead the way and we'll be as good as they are up front. Doesn't matter if we're throwing it or passing it. It's, it's, if they go, we go. And uh, yeah, they got a lot on them. People have talked about them. So um, they're going to find out real quick against this Auburn defense on, on how good we are and, and how good we can be. Uh, so it's going to be a heck of a challenge for for everybody on offense, but up front especially, they're really good. Thanks. Eric? Eddie, you started to touch on it a bit uh, right there, but under Kevin Still, Auburn's typically had one of the best defenses in the league uh, year in and year out. Just from what you've seen going through some of their film, what, what kind of makes them stand out? Well, they know what to do, and they're, they're fast and they're long. Uh, and uh, they're aggressive. Uh, they they do a coach Steele does a great job of of mixing things up, and uh, he's a heck of a football coach. Uh, and they got a, a lot of speed and talent on that defense. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited about the challenge, and I know our players are. Uh, they're one of the top uh, ten defenses, maybe top five defenses in the country. Uh, you know, statistically last year. Eddie, I know you guys want to be physical, you know, both up front in the running game. Auburn's one of those defenses that's kind of known for its physicality as well. I mean, is that something that you kind of remind your guys throughout the week is, is something that they need to get prepared for? Absolutely. You know, one of our – the things that we always talk about is you got to be the most physical team out there. If, if in, in this league, if you're not, you don't have a chance. So, you know, the physicality part of it, when you leave that game, you know, you, you hope that they, they looked over and they said, man, that Kentucky football team, the, the one thing they will do is they'll get after your tail. Uh, and I, I don't expect anything else from our group. John Hale. Eddie, what have you seen from Terry's mental approach to this rehab, especially in the last couple of months? I know in the spring when we talked to him, he mentioned he hit a wall at one point in his recovery from surgery and got kind of down. Just how have you seen him as, as we've gotten closer to the games, use that as motivation or whatever? You know, I think after we saw the, 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 the hitting of the wall, uh, and it was just kind of about two weeks later, he, he really, there was something that happened. And he just started feeling a lot better. Uh, he was moving around faster. Uh, he was getting stronger. And, and where he finally said, you know what, I feel 100%. Uh, and I think that gave him confidence. And then when we got into uh, our camp and, uh, you know, you'd, you'd see him – take off and run and uh, you know, you could see the explosiveness and, and, and see him go. So I think it's just gained confidence and as that thing healed up and uh, what our trainers did and, and got him ready to go. Chandler. Hey Eddie, you mentioned uh, recently that the offense was struggling to finish in the red zone. And I was wondering, have you seen any improvement in that area as we neared the Auburn game? Yeah, you know, we'll have big red zone day tomorrow. Uh, we continue to throw red zone routes today. And so that that's always a concern every year as you go into uh, any year. You know, it's one of the, the statistics that you talk about that, you know, you want to score touchdowns in the red zone. And so, uh, you know, we'll find out after Saturday uh, how much we improved. Um, you know, there's no more scrimmages. I like where we uh, left off. And uh, tomorrow will be a big day for us as we uh, finish our last prep time for uh, red zone. All right, looks like that's all the questions for Coach Grand. We'll have uh, Terry and Landon up here shortly. Thank you all.